Hey, welcome back to the channel. Can't wait. So if you want to enjoy, um, no. we are recording. In this VB, the door is rattling. No, we are not doing that. Oh my God. What I was going to say before the camera fell. I think it's going well. One year on YouTube. When I started, I actually didn't know how serious I was going to be with it. And it took quite a while to get in the swing of things, but it's been a really fun and rewarding experience so far. And I've certainly learned a ton. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by on my channel. My name is Dan and I make videos for part-time creators or lazy creators to help them get things done. I posted my first video to YouTube in May 2020. So I've been on the platform for a little bit over a year now and I've uploaded a total of 34 videos and I want to share with you the four lessons I've learned on my YouTube journey so far. Let's dive in. Number one, consistency is king. Every person talking about success on YouTube preaches this very point. You have to be consistent to be able to grow an audience on the platform. This is not only important for you to, you know, stay connected to your existing audience and subscribers, but also for YouTube to suggest your content to new people. The YouTube algorithm gives priority to active channels that put out content regularly. And that makes sense if you think about it. Why would YouTube promote any channels that only have one or two videos on them? Because it doesn't help them with their target of keeping people watching and keeping people on the platform. So it's really important to find an upload schedule that you can stick to, whether that is several times a week, once a week, or once every other week. Try to find something that's realistic for your individual circumstances. I started uploading consistently at the start of 2021 and looking at my analytics, that made all the difference in getting views and more people finding my channel. I uploaded weekly up until April, but then it got a little bit too challenging combining my full-time job with a weekly upload. And I noticed that I only made videos that are easier and faster to film and edit, but not necessarily the kind of videos that I want to create. With that in mind, I changed my upload schedule recently to every other week to be able to spend a little bit more time refining each of my videos. So if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, I'd say it's really important to build a habit of creating content consistently, not only when you feel like it. So set up an upload schedule and put the systems in place for you to be able to hit your target upload date every time. Lesson number two, create searchable content. Creating searchable content, I believe, gives you the best chance of growing an audience early on. People don't know you yet, so they probably don't care about a day in your life or your skincare routine or what books you're reading. Not to say that these videos can't take off for new YouTubers, I'm sure they do, for some. But in the early days, the best chance to get your videos seen by people is by providing value or a solution to a problem that people are searching for on YouTube. One of my favorite YouTubers, Sunny Lena Duzzi, calls this evergreen content. And I think that's spot on because these types of videos have a much longer shelf life than, for example, a vlog. Depending on your niche, these searchable videos can be life hacks, DIY tips, product reviews, or tutorials. I think it's important, though, to stick to your niche. Not so much because it increases the chance of one particular video to get picked up by the algorithm, but it positions your channel in the best way to turn your viewers into subscribers. If you have a video about how to make poached eggs and one that is a camera review and then another one where you talk about how to build a shed, then I applaud you you've got some great talents there, but I think it's less likely for people to stick around and subscribe if your topics are all over the place. And that is much easier said than done, I find, especially if you have several interests that you wanna explore on your channel, or, and that's been the case for me, a video got picked up by the algorithm that's not really within your niche. Now, my main focus for this channel is to make videos for part-time creators like me. That includes topics like productivity, self-development, how to grow an audience as a creator, and tools that simplify your work and save time. However, my most watched video on the channel is one where I talk about my moving to Australia from Germany. When I posted that, it got picked up by the algorithm and in a short period of time brought a lot of 
new people to my channel, but these might not be interested in my other content. First, I was a bit confused as to what I should do now, and I even found myself thinking if I should shift the focus of my channel entirely, but I didn't want to do that. Now I'm trying to find a way to combine these two topics on my channel. I don't want to limit myself too much to one particular niche because, you know, both of these things are part of my story that I want to share on my channel. But my time is limited as someone with a full-time job trying to grow an audience online. And I'm still very early on in my YouTube journey. So I recently decided to shift my focus back to my target audience of part-time creators and create valuable content for them. If you are one of those, make sure you subscribe. I'm still going to post content about Australia and personal vlogs and travel vlogs, but it's going to be one of the content pillars that I will explore less frequently. Number three, don't obsess over the numbers. Now, I'm not saying stop looking at your YouTube studio analytics. Obviously, you will obsess over the numbers. We all do. What I do want to say, though, is to not get bogged down in those numbers and feel down if, you know, one of your videos only gets 20 views in its first week or doesn't perform the way you had hoped for. If you continue putting out content consistently and grow your library of videos on your channel, your audience will grow and all your videos will get more views eventually. That's what's great about YouTube. Your old videos are not dead, like on other social media platforms. They can be suggested to users for months or even years to come. And that's why I said in my previous point that it's really important to focus on searchable or evergreen content in the beginning. That ensures that you know, new people will continue to find your channel over time, especially when your videos get picked up by the algorithm or are being suggested by YouTube. And that can sometimes happen much later than you'd expect. I have a number of videos that started showing up in search weeks or even months after I initially published them. When I first uploaded them, I thought I used the right keywords and I have a compelling thumbnail and title so they are well positioned to be found right away. But then nothing happened for weeks. For example, the video that's currently performing best for me and that has become the second most watched video on my channel is one about iPhone vlogging gear that I posted in mid-February. You can see in the analytics that I got barely any views in the first month after publishing. Then it started to get some traction and then after two months it really started to bring in views consistently with a peak in April with 168 views in one day and now between 40 to 70 views per day. Before we jump into the last lesson, make sure to give this video a like. I'd really appreciate that because it would really help the channel out. Lesson number four, make it fun. This is super important if you want to stick to your upload schedule and put out content consistently. YouTube is a marathon and not a sprint. And in order for you to stay motivated and find satisfaction and happiness in your work, you need to make it fun and you need to enjoy the process. Try out new equipment, experiment with different styles, get friends involved in your shoots. All of this can not only help uh, you learn and progress and become a better YouTube filmmaker, but it also keeps things interesting and can even inspire new video topics. Because we're in it for the long run, right? The more fun the process is, the easier it is for us to stick to it and become true YouTube creators. I'm yet to find my YouTube friends here in Sydney that I can collaborate with on my videos. So if you are a YouTube creator based here in Sydney, hit me up. I still find ways to keep things interesting though. For example, for this video, I am using this audio setup for the first time. I've got the Rodecaster over here and the pod mic because I'm considering maybe getting into podcasting, but also it's great for video. So let me know in the comments below if you like the way this sounds. Okay, so these are the four lessons that I learned after one year on YouTube. If you are a part-time creator, I'd really recommend for you to consider getting into YouTube. It might seem like a lot of work, and it is. Make no mistake about that, it really is. But I truly believe that YouTube is the best platform for part-time creators as your videos have that longer shelf life and will continue to grow your audience in a way that other platforms simply don't. I definitely enjoy it 
and I learned a lot and I'm sure I'm gonna have my ups and downs with it, especially when work gets busy. I'm only halfway through 2021 where I wanted to post a video every single week and I already failed at that, so there you go. If you wanna know how my channel was performing while I was posting every week, check out the playlist up here. If you have a channel yourself, leave this video a like and leave a comment below and tell me how long you've been on the platform and how many videos you have posted so far. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.